Hey, good morning, everybody. Hope you're well this morning. Morning, Wilma. Morning, Kim. There's my sister, Glenna. All right, let us know you're here when you come in. So today we're going to be in Matthew chapter 15. Um, just a, another another series, another progression in this story uh, of Jesus, learning about him, learning how he ministered to and loved those people around him. Uh, he challenged them, too. So, good morning, Kim. There's my mom, Kathy. Kim Yons is here. Peggy. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I see this. Piper is barking this morning. All right. Let's have a word of prayer, and then we'll, then we'll jump in. Dear Lord, thank you for this morning. Lord, we pray it's going to be a beautiful day today. We're thankful for the sun. Um, Lord, we just, we're just thankful that the seasons of the year, even something like fall and spring and summer and winter, those show your faithfulness. The sun comes up this morning. We know that that is your faithfulness. Lord, we know that your word shows us over and over again who you are and your faithfulness. Lord, we know that Jesus gave his life for us. And so, Lord, thank you, Lord, for sending him that we could uh, be reconciled to you forever. Lord, we love you. And we ask all this in the name of Christ. Amen. All right. Ter Terry and Robin, Lorraine, good morning, everybody. So let's read Matthew chapter 15 together. He says, Some Pharisees and teachers of religious law now arrived from Jerusalem to see Jesus. Well, you know, guess what? They're not coming for good motives, okay? They're coming to confront him. They ask him, Why do your disciples disobey our age-old tradition? For they ignore our tradition of ceremonial hand-washing before they eat. Jesus replied, And why do you, by your traditions, violate the direct commandments of God? For instance, God says, Honor your father and your mother, and anyone who speaks disrespectfully of father or mother must be put to death. But you say, it's all right for people to say to their parents, sorry, I can't help you. For I have vowed to give to God what I would have given to you. In this way, you say they don't need to honor their parents. And so you cancel the word of God for the sake of your own tradition. You hypocrites. Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you, for he wrote, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship is a farce, for they teach man-made ideas as commands from God. Then Jesus called to the crowd to come and hear. Listen, he said, and try to understand. Listen to this. It's not what goes into your mouth that defiles you. You are defiled by the words that come out of your mouth. Then the disciples came to him and asked, do you realize that you offended the Pharisees by what you just said? Jesus replied, Every plant not planted by my heavenly Father will be uprooted. So ignore them. They are blind guides leading the blind. And if one, if one blind person guides another, they will both fall into a ditch. Then Peter said to Jesus, Explain to us the parable that says people aren't defiled by what they eat. Listen to this. Don't you understand yet? Jesus asked. Anything you eat passes through the stomach and it goes into the sewer. But the words you speak come from the heart. That's what defiles you. For from the heart come evil thoughts. Murder, adultery, all sexual immorality, theft, lying, and slander. These are what defile you. Eating with unwashed hands will never defile you. So this, this part of the story here, Jesus is engaging not only with the Pharisees and the religious leaders, but also with his own disciples. The Pharisees were asking him, why is it that your disciples don't go through this ritual, this ceremonial hand washing before they eat? Jesus said, it's all about the heart. Okay, it's all about the heart. He says here, from, from, the, it says, from the words you speak come from the heart. So actions words, behaviors emanate from the heart. And the heart is who you really are, okay? 
Because he says here, evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, lying, slander. Those all live in the heart. So what you say and what you do come from that. God is more concerned with, almost completely more concerned with the condition of our hearts. The only solution for a transformed heart is a personal relationship with him. That's what he's getting at here. He was telling the Pharisees, y'all are too worried about loopholes. You know, he talked about giving to your parents and saying to your parents, I really can't give to you because I've been, I'm committed to give to the church. Hypocrites, Jesus says to them. You you found a loophole in the system. <clears throat> so it says here, uh, he says, talking about them, he says, every plant, verse 13, every plant not planted by my heavenly father will be uprooted. He says, these religious experts are like the blind leading the blind. They're going to go into a ditch. And he says, tell us about this. And Jesus is, is very, he's very abrupt and blunt with his disciples. He says in verse 16, don't you understand this yet? This is what we've been talking about. This is who I am. So go into verse 21. Then Jesus left Galilee and went north to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Gentile woman who lived there came to him pleading, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. For my daughter is possessed by a demon that torments her severely. Number one, you need to see the social differences here. This was not a Jewish woman. This was a Gentile woman. And Gentiles were looked upon as being, and that's who we are. Unless you've got Jewish blood, you are a Gentile. So they were looked upon as being um, not really human. They, they were considered to be lower forms of life. So the fact that Jesus engaged with her was a pretty big deal. But know this, there is no partiality with God, right? There's no racial differences with God. There's no political differences with God. We must all come to God the same way through his son, Jesus. And so he sa she says, my, 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 my daughter is possessed by a demon. Would you help her? Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. Know this, even though she's a Gentile, she knows who he is. She knows that he has the authority and the ability to heal her and deliver her daughter. It says, verse 23, but Jesus gave her no reply, not even a word. Then his disciples urged him to send her away. Tell her to go away, they said. She's bothering us with all of her begging. How often do we get so involved in the work of church or ministry that we don't see the immediate needs around us? It's real easy to do that. It's real easy to get busy with work and life and church and stuff and doing the business of of all the things that we do, well, we got people right there in our faces who have needs, being aware, open. And he says, Then Jesus said to the woman, I was sent only to help God's lost sheep, the people of Israel. But she came and worshipped him, pleading again, Lord, help me. Jesus responded, It isn't right to take food from the children and throw it to the dogs. Know this, this was not a derogatory. Uh, remember, the Gentiles were considered to be lesser people. But Jesus is, this word, if you trace it back to the original language, is more like a, a house puppy or something. It's not, a, it's not as derogatory as what it seems. And she says, she replied, that's true. She said, that's true, Lord. But even dogs are allowed to eat the scraps that fall beneath their master's table. She's saying here, I know who you are. I know what you're capable of doing. I've heard stories. And she says, I, I, would, I would be satisfied. I would be satisfied with just a crumb from the master's table. Do we have that posture? Do I have that posture? That even a crumb from Jesus would be nourishing for my soul. I hope that I, I hope that I would. Okay? And so let's move on to see what happens next. It says, Dear woman, Jesus said to her, Your faith is great. Your request is granted. And her daughter was instantly healed. Note the persistence in the prayer and the uh, request that she was making to, to the Lord. Um, how persistent. I, I, can, I can confess I'm not always as persistent as I should be in my prayer life. I'll ask once. Sometimes I forget to go back. I get busy. Persistence. 
There is value in prayer that is persistent. What are you praying for right now? What are you what are you seeking the Lord after? What 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 do you have going on in your life that you are seeking the Lord to intervene in? You know, something that I have done in the past and again I'm inconsistent in it, but it's it does help is by writing down your prayer requests with dates and being persistent and continuing to go back to the Lord and making your case known to him. Guess what? He already knows about it, but he wants us to connect with him. Jesus, verse 29, Jesus returned to the Sea of Galilee and climbed a hill and sat down. He sat down. He was tired. A vast crowd brought to him people who were lame, blind, crippled, those who couldn't speak, and many others. They laid them before Jesus. Look at this. And he healed them all. He healed them all. The crowd was amazed. Those who hadn't been able to speak were talking. The crippled were made well, the lame were walking, and the blind could see again. And they praised the God of Israel. It's an amazing thing. Then, this happens again. Look at verse 32. Then Jesus called his disciples and told them, I feel sorry for these people. They've been here with me for three days, and they have nothing left to eat. I don't want to send them away hungry, or they will faint along the way. And it says here, the disciples replied, Where would we get enough food here in the wilderness for such a huge crowd? Jesus asked, how much bread do you have? They replied, seven loaves and a few small fish. So Jesus took all the people to sit down on the ground. Then he took the seven loaves and the fish, thanked God for them, and broke them into pieces. He gave them to the disciples who distributed the food to the crowd. They all ate as much as they wanted. Afterwards, the disciples picked up seven large baskets of leftover food. There were 4,000 men who were fed that day, in addition to all the women and children. Then Jesus sent the people home, and he got into a boat and crossed over to the region of Magadan. Aren't you amazed a little bit because just Jesus did this once, and now he's doing it again. And the disciples are like, how are we going to do this? It's unbelievable to me. because, But how often do I do that? I'll see God move in a situation, work miraculous things in the situation. And then a little time passes, life gets busy again, I get distracted again, and then another situation pops up that seems impossible. You're like, oh, what am I going to do? Our memories are very short, but know this, the faithfulness of God is long-lasting, and it's sustaining. And so here Jesus says, let me show you what I want to do. I want to feed these people. And he did. Okay? Jesus was always in the business of serving and loving and taking care of these people, taking care of his children. And so today, no matter what you're going through, no matter what impossible situation that you're trying to navigate, our God is able. Nothing is impossible with God. Think about the faith of that Gentile woman. There was no reason she should, she, she should come to Jesus and ask for healing for her daughter. But she did. And God honored that. These people heard Jesus was sitting on this hilltop. They all brought their family and friends who had issues. Jesus healed them all, the Bible says. Then they got hungry. And Jesus is here. Let me feed you. And he fed thousands of people again. A second time. And so here in this chapter, there's a lot going on. Jesus is challenging the Pharisees. He's teaching his disciples. He's healing. He's loving. He's feeding. Tomorrow is even going to get, it's just going to keep going. Um, by the time the week is over, we're going to be through um, Matthew chapter 17. There's 28 chapters in, in Matthew. Matthew is a long book. It's, it's uh, the longest of the Gospels. Uh, but we, we're, we're moving along well. Um, we've got I've got Matthew and Hebrew uploaded on YouTube. So if you are someone who wants to go back and and and, and redo a, a, a chapter or whatever, they're all there. Matthew and Hebrews. It's uh, so so I would encourage you to uh, subscribe to that or um, maybe pass it on to someone else who might have that need. It's hard to find on Facebook. You got to scroll down through months and months and months of stuff. But with uh, with YouTube, you don't have to you don't have to do that. All right. 
Lisa, he sure does protect. I'm telling you, when I when I saw that post yesterday, Lisa, about Mahala, I was was praising the Lord because that could have gone so badly. Mahala was one of my kids from Williamsburg, and uh, I always called her the third couch girl. She is just a sweet, sweet girl who loves Jesus. Anyway, she got into a car accident yesterday over there in Columbia, and is doing well, but it was super scary. All right, I love you all. Have a great have a great hump day. It's Wednesday. And tomorrow we'll be back for Matthew chapter 16. Let's pray together. Dear Lord, thank you for your goodness and mercy and grace. Thank you for your cross. Lord, help us to carry this with us all day long. Persistence in our prayers. Building our faith. Knowing that you are concerned Lord, with our heart. Lord, that you do impossible things. That nothing is impossible with you. Lord, we love you so much. And we ask everything. Everything. In the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. I love you all. Have a great Wednesday. See you tomorrow.